on Monday, April 25th, is the public hearing agenda. Um, the order now with our opening exercises, if you will please all stand. Heavenly Father, so often we come to you asking for things and forgetting to thank you for all the things you have. I want to thank you for the greatest country in the world that allows us to even be here so that we can have our concerns addressed and so that we may act accordingly. Please protect all of our first responders who are always there taking care of your people the way you have taken care of us and sheep. Keep us always in your grace and deliver us all home the same way we got here tonight, safe and sound. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Free with information Information Act, notice of this meeting and schedule with regard to all meetings and persons with special notification. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brown Crown? Yes. Commissioner Clifford? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Lawford? Here. Commissioner Milliken? Here. Commissioner Colston? Here. Commissioner Wolf? Here. Or on a written petition. We have no one that's signing to speak. Okay. So I mentioned item number four, ordinance number 2022-01, repealing ordinance number 2021-02, and 2021-06, wastewater collection system use and rate ordinance. The floor is now open for anyone wishing to speak. Um, well, this is just the public hearing. We have to vote on anything right now. Um, having heard not, no from the beginning, okay. Number five, resolution number 22 203, white water collection system using rate resolution. The floor is now open for any motion to speak. Item number six, resolution number 22 04, fiscal year 23. Annual budget resolution. Resolution. The floor is now open for anyone wishing to speak. Okay. Um, if anything has for set in the present, I'm very proud to be part of the budget on um, the increases in it and that I've managed to work through that. And uh, so I guess that's important to make. There's been I've been stepping out of place where I did uh Dorchester County, this is where um back to about 17 percent. And um also I did a great article about anybody that part about fuel costs. And we are too. Um maybe we'll get to this and maybe our next week budget maybe fuel costs will go back to now. And also I believe that um you know that when I first became a commissioner on that first day I went to school at Stowe, all of the boys were so excited to bring anybody here to build a bus, and I'm like, no, no, they're not. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, and I thought the best thing to do was to sell that property and put some of that money off into the property that's there. You know, they have enough problems with roofing roofs, flooding, running with roof roofs. Uh, a lot of our new equipment, uh, is bigger than what they used to have. So I feel like, um, the employees deserve to have a better facility. And I think it helps keep employees in the back to have a nice facility, um, uh, over there that will help with employee retention and attract new employees too. It makes life a little bit easier for them. I mean, let's say they're doing a dirty job and they deserve to have a good facility. That's all I have. Uh, 
Number four, introduction of who inspired by Tom's book, Get Inspired. Just real quick, I want to say thank you for all the hard work that Tom did in the beginning of his time. All the work going on, um, same thing with human resources. And with the paper, he's also in the area of honor with all the benefits and applications to this thing. And I appreciate the Tom and the Justin. So again, uh, we have three, three firefighters we'd like to introduce to y'all. Um, staff and fire department is glad we got them. Hopefully they're going to be here for a career at least they So, <laughs> so uh, this is John Escondido, uh, B Shift. This is Barrett Holly. He is A Shift. Charles Kent, he is B Shift. Jamal Frazier, B Shift. Sean Nolan, A Shift. And Chris Ellington, B Shift. Ellington and John were taken out of uh, fire recruit school and came on as a fire team after um, being successful at Columbia. And these four gentlemen in the middle here were direct hired to fire too. So we're glad to have them and I uh, hope they have a long time. <laughs>
and uh, Michelle and I have been uh, interacting. He's been our island leader in Colombia, and uh, we're just trying to give you an update on what is going on since October when we brought him on. So with that, we'll turn over to Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kyle Michelle, and I have been privileged to enjoy working with him guy the past six months. A lot of people say, oh, no, 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 it is a challenge because the project is so big that a lot of the money that's available, that would be available for it, is sort of money that's going to follow the first one. No one wants to go off the diamond and go first. And they say, well, if they go off the diamond, they will match. So you're trying to, trying to find money to work. The opportunity for it is good because there's a lot of people sitting here. Uh, Watershed restoration project. I'm sorry, James Allen Creek restoration project. Uh, so what we are what, what we have done is we have covered the uh, the water too much of a metaphor. But we have covered all the people who are who are interested in this. We have educated everyone. We've gone past educating the tax burden for some people. We're right now, in, in, in essence, continuing to have this conversation so we can get the processes to go forward that will allow us to do um, this moment. The, the sort of the, the big North Star out there of the ARPA Fund, the American Rescue Plan funds, that has been waiting at the legislature this entire session. They said that they were good at the beginning of the session, they did introduce. Past bills somewhat early in the session, February timeline, but then the Senate bill went to the House and it sat, and then the House bill went to the Senate and it sat. So at this point, kind of the, the, the state of play right now is that there's a $1.4 billion difference between the House budget, not our budget, House budget, and the Senate budget. And so now, Kind of everything is waiting in line behind the resolution of that because everything could be part of the solution to resolve that $1.4 billion difference between the House budget and the Senate. And that difference lies in the Senate wants to give a $1 billion tax rebate at the moment in South Carolina. And the House has no rebate in there. Senate has a $1 billion tax cut, lowering tax rates for two years. The House is $600 million tax cut. So the Senate has a $400 million larger tax cut at a $1 billion rebate, which means when they go to their top line number, the House is here, the Senate is $1.4 billion lower for two years, which means what they can fund under their budget is very different. Our funds are there. And as part of the negotiation, if the Senate and the House and the Senate are obviously going to get security with that, and we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about that. Okay, and why don't we put some of that money over into it? We can spend that part of the money on that, so we can put that over into the part of the And that would allow us to then balance that out. So the part of the bill becomes something that they can use as a budget negotiating tool. Is it possible that they're going to pass an ARPA bill and have it signed into law before the end of the regular session on May 12th? Yes, it's possible. I mean, because the bills are very, very similar. But it's also possible that those bills don't get resolved until we get past May 12th and we get into the budget negotiations, which will have to be done by the end of June. But we'll probably have to play the game. So that's, that's, that's where the ARPA bill is. The ARPA bill is $900 million for water and sewer in the house bill, 
Ordinance number 
it's an average of sixty dollars a year more, and then yes, the increase is a little bit less than, than twenty four. But um, you know, I hope Mr. Baker or Ed can explain the difference in these numbers. But this impacts the monthly base charge for over a hundred customers. That is really really good. So anyone want to answer that? If so, basically, the, what you see in the resolution mimics the uh, real land rate figure. So what was provided in the uh, updated rate study, that was February 2021, that is the resolution. And this is February. Right. Go ahead. So I, I don't know. Um, exactly what I can tell you is real van is also if you use this resolution, this resolution is or is based on their recommendation. I mean obviously the commission doesn't have time to look at this now, but just you know we have 15 commercial customers that have 1.5 and five for meters and one of the five meters. Five. Uh, so there's a three quarter inch meter, put on a three quarter inch pipe, so then it's meter on a one inch pipe, so we say the post job is for 2024, which we're voting on tonight, those folks, base charge is not $59.67 a month, what we were told in February, it is $114.75 a month. That's what's before us tonight. These numbers are just vastly different. And I, I think we have a little bit of a play on the budget to be able to make the change. And I would just, you know, ask the staff um, help us understand. As long as it's like what you were saying is that the final version of the package is after the rate, but the one that's done every five years that, that makes it more accurate. Is that correct? Yeah, so the original rate study was done in 2019. Is that what the package that you can bring was based on? No, it was based on an update that Will Band performed in February of 2021. When I started showing Will Band, look, these two or three costs are skyrocketing, and we're going from an annual cost of about $2 million in treatment costs to $3 million. That is uh, when they agreed to do a collection. And an update to the Because we incurred a 50% increase in the wastewater. Treatment cost. So when when that happened, we saw the costs going up. Obviously, that is what is included in the resolution. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about. I thought it would help the public to use a different explanation of where it is and what the problem is and where it is and the responsibility is. You know, we can have a 410 page memo about it that maybe four or five sentences and if they can't pick it up from that, then we may have had to call back to you guys to take up the explain. That's what I'm talking about, a simple explanation of the building that we Well, the, the explanation that I see is that we incur a 50% increase in wastewater treatment. Yes. So, so we are so we are the vehicle that helps get the water clean to the PWS. So where is that who's gonna pay for that? That's us taxpayers. I am a taxpayer too. I've been here for 51 years, my whole life on day right. So Tax pay and rate payers because we provide a service. And so that's that's a big jump of it, right there. And I'm, I'm sorry, but we haven't had a rate increase in 17 years. So 17 years. I guess now. Right. That was that was from 1994 to 2011. From 1994 to 2011, there was no increase in the basic volume of the charge. That's really not a 
because prior commissioners did not want to adjust the rate at all because they were too afraid of not getting elected or re-elected. So, um, yes, I absolutely do agree with Mr. Lawson that we need to make it it's very clear. That was one of the issues that happened in 2019. Mm -hmm. That, and with some there are a lot of people who didn't understand and didn't know why it happened. And if we can explain it, it's very clear that this is too custody. And it's a living expense, and we have to have certain services to live the way we conduct ourselves in this society. You know, you have to have it for either the food or so. I mean, it's very important that we do some of these that we can understand because, like, the people, when I tell people about the piping, I'll be saying to Mr. Hoffman for a million points and all this, but the piping is older than I am. That's just me. And they don't um the ability for the CSD since we do not have a bag full of money sitting around we are cash poor to use just the regular term. So if we don't increase rates, the people who do lend us money to get these major projects done, if they decide to call for the money that we don't have, then we're not gonna have a CSD. In a nutshell. Yeah, so basically, when we borrow money, there are covenants within there that say we have to maintain the system in a, uh, we've established rates that are going to maintain the system moving forward. And that was, uh, we, we went into the detail last meeting about the debt service covenant rate, where we have a tight plan to have uh, kind of a, a backward looking mechanism, but that's based on our financial statements. And, we're not the only ones looking at this. Obviously, the credit rating rating agency um, since we owe money to uh, CSRF, since we owe money to the USDA, we have to provide updates. And so, it was last July, I believe I emailed out, we were actually um, improved and our bond rating went to stable versus the negative outlook, and that was due to the, uh, the rating agency. So obviously, not only do you know the commission and the staff and the public look at this. Obviously, the credit the credit rating agencies that establish our bond rating, they're looking at that. They're establishing rates to be able to maintain the system. Any other questions? Yes. Who would be responsible for giving the taxpayer? With the rate payers and the taxpayers with information on what things the fifth district um, adopted tonight. Who's responsible? How would it go out? What type of notice would be provided? And, and so last year with the bills, I sent um, a letter um, explaining that. Um, I, I give you an example of what that looks like, but it would be something similar as a, a, a effective the first of July 2022. This is what it would be. Would it be a letter that fit the bill or something separate? A letter that fit the bill. Okay, so um, I'll look like to do that. Thank you. Do you have any reviews and put it on the website? Absolutely. We put it on the website, we put it on Facebook, um, and then obviously we try to directly communicate with customers as far as the rate. You know what? This is the time. Okay. I'm, I'm just wondering if that people kind of stand out. I don't remember. I, think, I, I see that part with the characters in the moment. Any other comments on the commission? I'm talking about the, um, uh, like the one and a half of pipes. Is that mostly commercial or is it even a region? It's mostly commercial. It's all commercial. Well, <coughs> yes, it's in the morning. We just have to choose. So you talk to commercial and the action type of businesses can see the increases on everything else in their own way. And um, now, our, uh, most of our clients, I guess all our clients have the right to run by electricity and their vehicles, we got that. Uh, I think that much increase in our electric rates. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would have I would have to go back and look, but um, I, I couldn't speak to the, the, the specific percentage.
However, we've got these other crowds that are getting this huge wallop, and, and there's an equity issue there that's not been explained that is a supply. So, you know, I, I think it's an important one, and, uh, uh, and it's 36 businesses that are impacted. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, so, as part of the um, quality assurance, the, the last resolution of uh, both the wastewater collection ordinance, or I'm sorry, the wastewater use and rate resolution, as well as the budget, were attached as part of the pack at the last meeting, which is missing today. So that, that's what went out to the commission in the last packet. That's what was publicly advertised. That's what's been on our website. And, and that's what's been on our um, Facebook. Uh, however, we communicate with our customers, this is going to have to be out of that. In the future, when we're given information, we want to let us know when you change your name, then we were out to leave the All right. Any other comments on the board? I think it's awesome. Hey, you know, if you've got a warning truck, you've got a plan to go with a little mansion to settle that one. You know, you probably don't know you can make it work. All right, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Brown Crouch? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Grant? No. Commissioner Lawson? Yes. Commissioner Milliken? No. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 2. Resolution number 22 04, fiscal year 23 annual budget resolution. All right, so uh, if you look number nine um, for the proposed agenda addition, where it calls for the wastewater collection system proposed budget for fiscal year for 22 and 23. So that, that was uh, number nine, um, and that was an agenda addition proposed by uh, Commissioner Hope. Sorry, come on. Now, I think I see the Sorry about that. I'm going back to nine. Sorry, proposed wastewater collection system, proposed budget for 2022 and 
between the framework of the fiscal three, fiscal year 23 budget resolution. Certainly, where we have an enormous amount of information provided to help guide these discussions at the ways and means committee meetings. This is a different process uh, to the annual budget in the form of a resolution. It's also a different annual budget document that's designed to align with the annual or monthly financial reporting provided to members of the commission with year date revenues and expenditures detailed in the form of budgeted versus actual figures. So, in summary, I believe the district made normal strides during this year 23 budget process and set the tone for a repeatable process in fiscal year 24 and beyond. So I appreciate the help going through uh, all that for last week. I make a motion to approve the resolution number 22-04 fiscal year 23 annual budget resolution. I second that for discussion. Okay. So we're sharing the yeah. um, while I appreciate the hard work on the back of the town and my day, um, this budget was very different from previous based on PSC budgets for those of us who lived here 25 years, 40 years, 50 years, 75 years, a long, long time. This looks real different. And for the layman or the asylum, for the customer, for the rate payer, it's not well understandable. So I certainly, personally miss the explanations and the pros. And um, you know, I was the, the town passed their budget last week on Thursday, and, and the mayor provided a, a one sheeter, which I think Alan has referenced several times, um, a one sheet. Here's what we're going to do next year. Here's where your money's going. That's just real nice to have and lets everybody know these are the vehicles we're buying. Here's what we're doing at Signal Point Road. We don't see that tonight. That wasn't in what was posted online for folks to look at. So I am one who prefers previous budgets and the, the pros, the pictures, the discussion, the explanation. Fund versus wastewater fund, all those things were very much were very much appreciated by me. Um, a lot of our line items are going way, way, way up, especially attorney's fees. I'm guessing that that's the case else. Um, fees are included in the line items in the full. Is that correct, Walter? Correct. Okay. And then I, I had some questions that I have not gotten answered. Um, I'd ask Mr. Schaefer if there are building costs. What it costs us to have our own done in Charlotte, where that is in a budget, kind of going into that. So, you know, I'd like to see a support and be cool with that. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I would say the activity in that case was compared to others. This is a lot more thorough, with a lot more uh, information than we have. Oh, yeah. And uh, my understanding was the fire trucks are not going to be getting. So right now the plan would be they yeah, have until yeah. December of 2023 to be able to deliver that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it would be um, the this would be 24 budget. That's the plan right now. Yeah, I, to be clear, I was not referencing the new ladder truck. I was referencing the other six trucks that are talking about bonds. Which is oh, that's cute. Okay. You know, again, I was speaking in terms of a one K. Here's what we're doing next year. I mean, I don't know how the front line is going to hate that. Are you just going to do this and just put this on my dear cotton paste? No, that actually is not what I was going to do. I would like to find a one page. Actually, you're going to find out if you're laying down on the whiteboard. Roll call vote, please. We are number 10. Resolution number 22-04, voting for the fiscal year 23 annual budget resolution. Yes. Mr. Brown-Crouch? Yes. Mr. Brown-Crouch? Yes. Mr. Clifford? Yes. Mr. Grant? No. Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Middleton? No. Mr. Colton? Yes. Mr. Wood? Yes. Motion carries by the two. Number 11, proposed quality beach contract for wastewater transportation. All right, so within your packet, um, you'll see the proposed quality beach contract for wastewater transportation. 
and having a report to the city of Valley Beach City Council. Approving this contract is a meeting on Tuesday, the 12th of April, 2022. And based on the recommendation of the real land rate consultant, um, you will see the increases associated with volumetric and base carbon um, in line with the real land study. I referenced this before, and that we will continue to engage our rate consultant with the city of Valley Beach and make sure that what is happening. Um, everybody understands the, the rationale, the methodology, and how that moves forward. So as uh, the district goes through the preparation for fiscal year um, 23, the rate study will be performed in 24. Um, Bali Beach, EWS, district, um, we will be um, working together as far as uh, how this looks and, and why the recommendations are what they are. This is a five-year contract proposed. Uh, it has been reviewed by the legal team of both entities, uh, both the city and the district. It's in line with general terms of the previous five-year agreement signed back in 2017. So we're uh, seeking permission to authorize the contract and then um, provide back the Bali Beach yes, I make a motion to approve the Bali Beach contract for the wastewater transportation section. Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. 
Number 16, fire departments enter local agreement for automatic aid. All right, so I'm very happy to report this town now pleasant seeking membership to the regional automatic aid group. And so that would make them the proposed sixth member in addition to the city of Carlson, North Carlson, St. John's Fire District, and the Andrews BSD, and James Island BSD. So what we're doing is um, obviously this has been reviewed by legal and it's very similar to the previous uh, interlocal automatic aid and we're seeking a motion to authorize the fire chief and the district manager to execute all the legal documents associated with the interlocal agreement. And I know the chief's been working to be able to try to understand when we're all going to go sign that. So, so Last time I was at the fire museum, might get some press, um, you know, before uh, we get it wound up. Obviously, this has to go around and the agreement has to be signed by all of the uh, single member representatives for all six. So it is a process to get that through everybody. Yes, sir. Actually, we have the fire agreement to have six copies and they go down the line and each of us will sign. I make a motion that we um, approve the fire department and the local agreement for automatic aid. Discussion? Roll call vote. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, I just want to make sure one thing. Anything that uh, happens on the island here, you know, there is six feet of fire departments now. The PSP is still in the command. Go ahead. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Rockcraft? Yes. Commissioner Clifford? Yes. Commissioner Grant? Yes. Commissioner Lawson? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Item 14, March District Management Report. All right, so we got a lot going on in the district. Please hold up any questions until I get to the report and we can try to field some answers from there. So the district has another successful Adopt a Highway event. It was uh, Saturday the 9th of April, and that's the opportunity to participate this Saturday, the 11th of June. We meet at 8 a.m. in the corner of Folly and Old Johnson Road. Everybody helps to keep the island clean. The district's team building event is uh, this Thursday, the 28th of April, at 1 p.m. in the Bay Fire Station Number One. Uh, please, I appreciate the participation of the commissioners and the chair of the bike bill. Uh, please let me know if something comes up between now and this Thursday. The plan right now is uh, I have not heard uh, but one from one commissioner, so we're planning for six commissioners to participate with the staff. And um, this event will benefit James Island Outreach while we're representing James Island Outreach there. It's limited to 40 participants. Um, and we'll be splitting up into eight different teams with five. Um, each team consisting of five men members to build a bike for a great cost. Uh, the team will be, uh, we're all on the same team. So within your packet, you will see the um, summary of the financial report. And in there, um, what I always try to look at is where we are versus the target. Now, this is reported through March. So, that is nine months through, or three quarters of the way through fiscal year 22. And so, the, the target is 75%. So, um, that, uh, when, we, when you're going through that at 75%, um, total actual general fund expenditures. Um, year to date are the six million three hundred ninety-eight thousand six hundred one dollars and twenty cents, and that is right at seventy-two point eight four percent, seventy-three percent, which is right about on target for seventy-five percent through nine months of fiscal year twenty-two. Um, we're working with finance department head uh, to determine if a fiscal year twenty-two budget amendment is needed. If a fiscal year 22 budget amendment is determined to be necessary, members of the commission can expect 
the, uh, the amendment to be molded after ordinance number 202104. And that was the amendment approved in the fiscal year 21 budget last June uh, 2021. And the first reading was made as well. Uh, commissioners will remember uh, we had to an appropriate an additional $350,000 uh, for the water fund associated with the increase in treatment costs paid to the CWF. So the proposed timing is identical with the first reading, having May regular meeting, uh, and then we would schedule a public hearing in the second reading um, if that goes forward for the June regular meeting. So this budget is adopted by ordinance, which is changed by ordinance, which would repeat that process. This is 23, adopted by resolution, and that is we still have a public hearing, but it is one, um, one week. So um, we got lots going on uh, over the next couple weeks to be able to understand if that uh, budget amendment is necessary. Um, we have a couple of things coming up. So um, I'm very happy to report the city of Charleston dispersed over $1.8 million to the district associated with property tax payments for tax districts 35 and 36. And this is for fiscal year 22 money. money. Again, this is a concept where the district needs to have enough general fund balance to cover operating expenditures and the property tax disbursements are received much later in the fiscal year than when we adopt the budget. The, so the city of Charleston's disbursement was received in the month of April 2022. So the commission will see that revenue reflected in the financial reports next month when it's reported through April 2022 or 10 months through uh, where the target would be 83.3. So this disbursement from the city of Charleston will significantly bolster the general fund revenue reported next month for lines 01 Zero 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 four zero one zero two, which is real property three five, and then O one zero 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 four zero one zero four for real property three six. So if you just look at the summary report, um, you will see for total general fund revenue, um, we budgeted ten point two, we received seven point nine, almost eight million. So that two point two million dollar difference, a significant chunk of that is made up by that disbursement that was the largest outstanding item to be collected from the city of Charleston. So uh, that will help put us much more in line with the general fund revenue and we will see that reported next month. Um, so we will we have several different meetings coming up this week. Um, the intergovernmental agreement is scheduled for Wednesday right here at Town Hall at 7 p.m. Um, so, uh, we've met for the town and the county, um, all the stakeholders here on James Island will have a, a meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, the next day, the same time as uh, we were doing 1 to 3.30 for team building, I will be going right back to the office with James Island Free Task Force meeting at 4 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. And so, uh, I will be giving them a very similar update as to um, what happened here. And uh, I sent out an email associated with die testing and we will report formally combined CWS and the district tested the die um, and uh, basically we put die in the pump station, pump it through the ladder that go under the creek. I'm very happy to report both CWS and the district did not have die in the creek. So that was good reporting. Uh, thanks to the fire department. Through the health flight drums, uh, the, the wastewater department helped uh, monitor, uh, make sure they know where the laterals are to be able to monitor for that dock. So that was about the best result we could ask for. And it was a cheap way to test that we are not uh, contributing towards the problems within the fleet with our current system. What about laterals? Is there one that doesn't apply? I'm sorry, uh, uh, the sewer space that go underneath, that go in the fleet underneath. <laughs> no, we didn't have 
There's no plan to serve lunch on Thursday. No. Good question. Okay, and if there's something we can't immediately answer, but they can post it and then we can back to you if you guys have any available. Okay. How about how long? One to three thirty. Okay, I can do it about. Yeah, we have it. Okay. They will have everything facilitated. Okay. Okay, so one o'clock on Thursday. Well, yeah, so, so, so make sure the commissioners will be paired up with different departments. Um, and we will be building the bike. Um, there will be lots of earned parts. We'll have to earn, uh, I'm not going to give it away, but there will be a key building structure so that um, we build two bikes to be able to. The Bay Fire Station Number One. Fire Station Number One. One, So the easiest way, right? They have uh, been able to work with the Divinity Church to be able to put uh, some apparatus, um, minimize some of the parking. We have people who work vehicles at the district, so we can get you over and back. Um, if you're able to come to Signal Point, we can transport you over and back. Um, and uh, there will be uh, parking, limited parking available at fire station number one. Um, if you're able to carpool, uh, you want to see what's going on at Signal Point, and you want to see what it is we're proposing to renovate there and why. Uh, we had to explain that prior to. Um, over to five state That would be the If you're if you're there at uh we'll be able to show everybody if you have any questions and then get over in time to start right at one o'clock Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number 15 is committee and James on public service district representative report on the points we have done. However, in our packet, we do have correspondence in our newspaper article practically so um, addressing the fire that's occurring in the beach. Do you have They're working with their uh, sheriff's office on the leader's causation, um, but we can immediately investigate that working with the sheriff's department. The fire department works with the sheriff's department. And thank you all for working that and making sure nobody will turn to you and making sure that you know you can replace property we can't replace people. You see what? And I understand the good thing is that they had already torn out most of the wood that they were going to use. So on the very goal of that um, was damaged in the fire. From what I was told, there's uh, boards like that that were on the wall and on the floor that had RDs on there that are historical that definitely you know, we need to hang on to say. So um, most of that stuff was really all in that room. So some of what's preserved for that spot. Yeah, sitting on the outside of the Thank you. They were able to say that. And thank you all for always doing going above and beyond. Always heard from the team. Um, of course, one of the newspaper articles, oral and written petition, three minutes per speaker, and then we sign up for the second half. Do you have anyone in the audience that would like to speak that would not be a chance to sign up? Please state your name and address for the record. And then one more that would like to speak. Then we'll be moving on to item number 18, which is executive session. We're entering into executive session to discuss um, the real estate services and technology services. So we thank y'all. Uh, we will call you back in when we're here. Yes. Commissioner Post? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we just exited executive session where no decisions were made on the topic.
discuss regarding uh, real estate and technology services. I make the motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Crouch. Yes. Mr. Clifford? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Oh, yeah. Commissioner Wilkin? <laughs> yes. Commissioner Poston? Yes. Commissioner Wilkin? Yes. Motion carries again. Motion carries. <laughs> um, and <laughs> 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 I ain't gonna say. I'm gonna